SBF was arrested in the Bahamas, crushing his dream of becoming a deli menu item. I'll order the SBF, please. Avatar 2 is out in theaters this weekend. End of message. We read a book full of questions for husbands, and it wasn't even written by a woman. Roger Stone thinks there's a demonic portal over the White House. But what else is new? Biden signed the Respect for Marriage Act, and there is no better way to make this happen than to invite a drag queen to perform for children. All this in Mormons. The B Weekly. Friends, why would you want to live in a home where there are no fire extinguishers, no first aid kits, no smoke alarms, or carbon monoxide detectors? Then why live your life like you don't need a good stockpile of emergency food? It's designed to be your just-in-case food if the worst ever happens. And these days, it probably will. That's why you should snag this deal from preparewithbee.com. They're knocking $100 off their four-week emergency food kit so you can fit this food into your family budget. Each kit is packed with a wide variety of delicious, easy-to-prepare meals. You get breakfasts, you get lunches, dinners, drinks, snacks. You will not go hungry. So get one kit for each person that you care about. Go to preparewithbee.com and save $100 on each four-week emergency food kit that you need. Uh, when the world falls apart, you'll be glad you have this food. Go to preparewithbee.com. Go to preparewithbee.com today. Preparewithbee.com. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Babylon Bee Podcast. This is an exciting podcast. We're going to cover the news. The only yes. podcast where you can get the news. So exciting. And today I'm joined by Emma, Jarrett, and Adam. It's going to be a fun time. Hey, we're getting ready for our Christmas party in a few days here. Except Adam can't be there. No, oh, I'm going to be out of town this Every year. Every time we plan Our Christmas something. party was so much fun last year, too. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. We went and hung out. Where are you going to be this time? Uh, I'm doing shows in uh, Maslin, Ohio at a comedy club called Crackpots. So yeah. that's where I'll be this weekend. Sounds funny. Yeah. So Seth's flying out, so we're cleaning up the office right now. I had to send everybody a message and say, be, to work, be at work. Pretend on, we get here on time. On time. <laughs> <laughs> and, what time uh, are we supposed to be here? I, we don't, we've never really... You have to check your contract. <laughs> it varies by, <laughs> it varies it probably by, varies by yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. I love coming in like the first one and turning on the heat before Brandon gets here. Is he, oh, because oh, he always cranks I'll, it down. Huh? Yeah. Brandon keeps our office at like, what, 50 Fif degrees? No, 62. Yeah. <laughs> and like, wow, we're here. Yeah. So. I live about four hours away or something. It's crazy. Well, and I've started taking my kids to school in the mornings. And so it's like a whole... Go down, drop them off, come back. My other kid goes to a different school, and like sometimes I'll take him too, and then I come back, and then it's like mm -hmm. I might work out, and then I drive here, and it's like I'm like oh, okay, it's two p.m. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I always leave in the I'll morning, in. imagining I'm gonna get there on time. Yeah, and, and then, then it's, it's just always like, oh. just as late as ever. I feel like I'm in trouble if people are here before me. You would be, but you're we're very. Allowed. That's a military. That's a, <laughs> that's a military yeah, holdover. High probably. sense of responsibility. Yeah, you have to be like 15 minutes early, or you're late, and. That's the military. It took me a while to get used to this like non-job job because before I had a real job mm -hmm. and it was like show up at 6 a.m. You know, they had like strict facial hair yeah. things, which Emma's yeah. run, run yeah. a fallow. Yeah, I, I shaved like clean she shaving because I, I don't like the I restrictions stitch. of the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, that's very all. Just, it's very hard to smile when you have it on. <laughs> that's all that we're allowed to have in the military is a mustache. Mustaches. But I can, I can, can paint my nails. Can women have a mustache? Technically. So there's In no today's military, well. they can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think men can paint their nails certain colors, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? In the yeah. military? But you can't have a beard. This will look natural. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's the dumbest thing? <laughs> yeah. You can't have a beard. It gets you worse than You can paint your there. fingernails. And you can, can only have paint a, your fingernails camouflage. Camouflage. So the enemy <laughs> doesn't see your fist coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Is that one of your jokes at the this weekend? Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll, I'll go try it out at some open mics first. <laughs> okay. See how it lands. <laughs> I'm good. I've just thought of a good subtitle for this podcast. The Babylon Bee Podcast. People talking over each other and awkward silences. Yeah. I think that's what I would call the review that we did that's going to come out next week. What review? Oh, The yeah. California Moose Oh, Texas. the commentary thing? The commentary. The commentary. That was fun. I, I like recording that. We, we did like a director's commentary type DVD track thing that we talked <laughs> over the... Over the uh, sketches, it was fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I'd like to do more of that. That was everyone had to like hug it out afterwards. I know it was like a it lot was of, like we a got lot to, of beef. We got to the commentary, and all of a sudden we're like, "Well, <laughs> someone forgot the props that day." 
<laughs> we're all like, <laughs> we're all like, geez, Ooh, should we talk still, about this? Still holding on to this. Uh, still holding on. I don't know yeah. if anyone's still listening to this episode right now. <laughs> 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 it's probably true. It's true. What else is going on in this episode, Kyle? Well, we've got news items. We've got Sizzler facts. We got Banger of the Week. We got Bomb of the Week. We got Adam's Weekly News. We found a crazy old book from the 70s just for husbands. And we have the best and craziest Wikipedia edits of all time. So buckle up. But first, we're going to do some self-promotion. Adam? Yeah, uh, I have some big news. I have my Dry Bar Comedy Special, which I mentioned uh, a few times last month that was coming out. Uh, it's now available on drybarcomedy.com. So if you're a fan of uh, stand-up comedy, I'm really proud of this special. I taped it like a year and a half ago. Uh, it's finally edited. Dry Bar is a clean comedy website. They're affiliated with Angel Studios. Um, so you can go to drybarcomedy.com. You can rent it for $1.99. You can buy it for $3.99. Or you can get a free one-month subscription to the whole website and see all of their comedy specials yep. if you use uh, my name as the promo code, Adam Yenser. You can also just go to Angel, Angel what is it, VidAngel. VidAngel, yeah. If you are a subscriber for VidAngel. What does that also yes. have Drive you, you can get Drive Bar Comedy on there. You, yeah, you can, okay. you can yeah get so any there. of you that are um, uh, that are VidAngel people, go on Drive Bar Comedy, and Adam's special is amazing. I've seen it, a lot of the jokes, and yeah. it's really, really fun. And if you do, if you go for the option where yeah. you use my name, uh, Adam Yenser, as the uh, one free one-month subscription, you can check out all the other comedy specials they have. There's people that we've had on here that have great specials. Erica Rhodes is on there. Um, Kellen Erskine, I think, is on there. Great, There's yeah. a comic named uh, Randy Lubis. We haven't had him on here, but I think our audience would like him. They have a lot of really good content. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Very funny. Did they take out all the jokes where you just trashed Mormons? Uh, I didn't do those jokes in this <laughs> special. I'm saving that for my next okay. special. <laughs> all this in Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, we also want you to go to BabylonBeeLive.com to come see us in person on February 24th of 2023 next year at the River Ranch Stockyards in Fort Worth, Texas. So please buy tickets now. All of us in this room, except for one of us, will be there for you to meet and greet. And we have discussion panels, Q&As, live podcasts, all kinds of fun stuff that is going to happen. So please join us. Tickets are selling out, and we'd love to see you there, BabylonBeeLive.com. Let's go to what's in the news this week. What's in the news this week? Tuesday, Joe Biden signed the Respect for Marriage Act. Yeah. Because he respects marriage. Uh, it codified federal recognition of same-sex and interracial marriage into uh, law, which nullifies the 1996 Defense of Marriage Act, uh, which defined uh, marriage as between one man and one woman. Uh, if you want to know what a bill does, read its name and assume the opposite. <laughs> yes. I, I like how respect, defending marriage means it's between a man and a woman. But respect respecting marriage <laughs> means it's between, between same-sex people or think, whatever think, you want and, it to be between. You know, this, the whole thing with this is, first of all, no one was attacking interracial marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one was trying to walk that back. Right. They just put they that just in there. They it in there. And then they, the Republicans, some of them were trying to get in an exemption so that religious groups and religious organizations would not be forced to participate in this, but the... Democrats got that part removed. I, I think some churches, that went churches, along with it. churches yeah. are still protected, but yeah. para, para church organizations yeah. and any kind of Christian organization, including, you know, whatever, could talk about us, but like everybody else is under this. Yeah. And the, then the tyranny of businesses, like if yeah. you're yeah. if you're a bake shop and you don't want to make a, a wedding cake for a certain couple, you don't have that right. Yeah. Or an interracial couple. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> no, just kidding. Oh. That's what we assume. I was like, did I it. say that? <laughs> yeah, that's what you mean. Well, I, You're all I, for a certain couple. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, saying. well, I'm like <laughs> in a one and a half interracial. Anyway, um, but I think like Republicans need to name things better. Like in defense of marriage, it doesn't sound as nice as respect for marriage. I like we just need like to. I like either. Like defense is too like but they do that with every and... bill from both sides, and they've done it forever. You know, like yeah. the, like they had the the Inflation Reduction Act, which didn't reduce inflation. Yeah. But that's that's the Democrats. Under George W. Like, Bush, even brilliant. I mean, you had like no child left to, behind, which some people support and some people didn't. But they give them those names, so you think like if oh, you yeah, don't support good, this, good oh, you don't respect. Oh, you want to leave children behind? It's just uh, yeah, so crazy. Yeah, you don't like, want to reduce yeah. inflation. If Republicans were going to write a bill about how if you don't pass high school, we'll leave you behind. They'll just write, leave a child behind act. <laughs> you got to phrase it better. Yeah. Like oh, look, can we scroll up again? I want to see the, the, the tweet that uh, Joe Biden sent out. He said, today I just signed the Respect for Marriage Act into law. We are reaffirming a fundamental truth. Love is love, and Americans should have the right to marry the person they love. 
What's crazy about this, have you guys seen the old video of Joe Biden back from the Defense of Marriage Act no. age? <laughs> he where he's the going, he, there's a video online of Joe Biden from, when was that, 1996, 97? He's been around for a going, while. Of him going, of him going, it's settled, marriage is between one man and one woman, we've defined that, nobody is going to change that, and he's just insisting oh that God. that's what he believes, and that's what yeah. this, this uh, legislation just, uh, does. Another example of when the culture shifts and everybody moves with it and uh, anyone that's got their finger to the wind, it's going to change. You should name that. We'll call it the Jarrett window. Uh, I, I like the, that. Let's call it the Jarrett, Jarrett window. window. Yeah. yeah. And naturally, Biden invited a drag queen who performs <laughs> for children to attend the signing of the Respect for Marriage Act. I don't think the drag queen performed for children at the She didn't signing. perform for children at the White House, no. Is, it, is, that, drag is that a child Drag circle? queens are he's. Oh, this one is a he, yeah, yeah. I never know. I guess there's... No, no, that's a he. Yeah, that's a he. But no, let's not sure, respect it, whatever that's they... That's a dude. <laughs> I respect for drag queens. Is that I a, call is, transgender like transgender women. He also. I just yeah. You know, it's like your brain. When I just you, call him when dudes. you see it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Roger second. Stone has claimed that a demonic portal opened up above the White House after Biden moved in. He had an interview with Eric Metaxas, and Stone said, "I think that a portal, a demonic portal, opened above the White House around the time that the Bidens moved in." This was brought to my attention by a Christian who lives in North Florida, <laughs> who sent me a bunch of documents and also a bunch of notations from the Bible about portals. <laughs> the really? portal is said to be swirling like a cauldron. If you zoom in on the video evidence, you can actually see. The, oh, I didn't know it was invisible. Yeah, so that's what's so. <laughs> I, I was gonna say crazy, but interesting about his yeah. claim. He's not just claiming that there's a demonic, a demonic portal or an influence. He's claiming that it is visible above the White House, okay. like a like a Ghostbusters like, swirl. <laughs> like a swirl. Just, yeah. why, why would you energy take, beam coming down? Like, why would you trust the claims from North Florida? He's like, if like, someone in D.C. because yes. a guy from North Florida sent me some documents. I know. That's and he also said funny. the media refuses to cover it. Like, they all know it and see it, but yeah, they, they, just, just, they just won't recover it's it. Because they have cover portals it. over all of their all of their media outlets. That's true. Yeah. I, I was in D.C. for 2021, and I don't remember seeing a portal over the White House. I was just there, I was there. like a month ago. I, I, like, you were at the portal. There was no portal. I you were at the Capitol on January. I was at the Capitol two weeks ago. And <laughs> well, was that, no, it was. There was no. Oh, you didn't see the portal. No. Uh -uh. No, it was twenty twenty. January sixth, twenty twenty one was the insurrection. Really? Twenty twenty. No, it wasn't. That's, is that when the portal opened? Because the election was twenty twenty. Yeah. And he got voted in. Yeah, January sixth. He was going to get inaugurated in in January twenty twenty one. I was I was around. On or around the capital. Let me think. The no, I, I was scrambling. I was really brain. close because I was in Pennsylvania, so I could have went to the the rally if mm -hmm. I wanted to. And I knew people that were thinking about going. I didn't go yeah, to I that. Knew, I knew people that were there. But I was trying to think of we like know people that were there. Yeah. Now yeah. in the military, every year we have a "Don't Storm the Capitol" training. <laughs> wow it's like called training, like, no bad don't do that like, <laughs> do, do they spray you with spray <laughs> bottles don't storm the capital it's called bad. it's called anti-extremism but okay. it's basically like mm -hmm. it's because of it was really close to after the the riots so i had that training in 2021 which i thought was too soon for them to come up with a training but it's like don't don't join facebook groups don't attend meetings. Trying to get you not don't, extremized. Yeah, and it had a scale of like, this is bad. Don't talk to people who are <laughs> of, of groups. And then this is worse. Don't join the groups. And this is really bad don't. when you go to the rallies. <laughs> now, where is you working for the Babylon Beef? But until then, <laughs> are you at level two right now? I, I'm, yeah, I think I'm like level <laughs> two. That situation. sounds like level three to me. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> You're participating. Emma's yeah. like code blue right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I like <laughs> walk a fine you. line. Yeah. They're watching uh, you. Well, Sam Begman Freed was finally arrested Monday in the Bahamas after the $32 billion FTX collapse. And they said that FTX customers are out $8 billion from this. So that is wild. But yeah, they finally got him. They, they nabbed him in the Bahamas. Jerk. And cool. Good for him. That's great. Uh, next story. It was, it was so <laughs> weird. I have no in interesting things No matter to say. how much no, I read nothing. about this story, yeah. I, I get the impact of it, but it just bores me. <laughs> like, I know he, he gave a lot of... I guess the biggest scandalous part is, is what happened in the money, and then there was some rumors that he was, like, donating it somehow to Democratic yeah, candidates, like but... laundering money was He was laundering money for the here. DNC. Yeah. It's, it's weird how he wasn't immediately arrested. He was like, oh, let's go on talk shows and interviews, mm -hmm. and, and then, surprise, you're going to go to jail for... Scan like scamming people. Well, they arrested him because people were saying, "No, they're not going to prosecute him. They're not going to get him." So it's good well. They got what they needed out of him. Yeah. So you're done. That's true. Interesting. I'm going to put her out in a code level orange. 
<laughs> Elevating. I'm at least like one. I'm I'm allegedly out of one out of two. I'm surprised like, the Democrats haven't introduced like the respect for not storming the Capitol anymore. <laughs> 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 Love our Capitol. To make it extra illegal next time. This is what's really under attack. Let's write something. <laughs> um, let's move on. This is awesome. The New York Times named John Fetterman among 2020's most stylish people. 22s even, but that's 2022. Insane. Yeah. You know, I tell you, the basketball shorts, the basketball hoodie. shorts and the sweatshirt. <laughs> it's funny. I guess that makes like Kyle. The most, oh yeah, I was gonna, most. I was gonna say I will not have hoodie slander on this spot. No, I I wear a hoodie almost. I don't appreciate like I don't like Fetterman almost as every much day. as the next guy, but. I like the hoodie. He always yeah, looks like fat Ray al Ghul to me. That's what I think it's, every uh, time I see him. <laughs> he looks like a cartoon character. He's got that weird, I, the, yeah. the, the villain beard. And right. kind of, when he looks down, the he's got scowling the scowling eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah for true. sure. I just think it's interesting that, you know, you wouldn't consider him fashionable. You look at a person that's fashionable, oh. you think of like, I don't know. They're trying to say, you you know, he's bringing of? the hoodie back. It's kind of. I don't know. Jason Statham. I, he's very fashionable. Basketball shorts are so ugly. Yeah, no, but those are hot right now. The super I, I, long yeah, I agree with basketball that. shorts that go down to your like ankles. They're I, not. Adam hot. Sandler They're wears those, ugly. and everybody's like, yeah, but oh, look at these amazing new basketball." Yeah, people point them out as like, "You don't, you don't dress Adam nice." Sandler has always gone out looking like a slob. I feel like <laughs> like he looks good at movie premieres, and then every other time you see a photo of him, it's yeah. just like, have you guys ever seen Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler? Oh yeah, we uh, <laughs> no. no. He have plays you seen the it? brother and the sister. We'll have to have a screening of that yeah. sometime soon, <laughs> so we all understand this reference. He does play a good. I just watched one of those old SNL sketches where. It was everybody was playing a valley girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are fantastic. With Chris Farley, who's one Chris of Chris Farley, the Gap David girls. Spade, the Gap Girls. Yep, David Spade and Amazon. Give me some of those nachos. So yeah, nachos. Nachos. Lay off me. I'm starving. I'm starving. <laughs> so good. Are you gonna we say just, something? We for care us? about <laughs> you. We're your friends. We can't let you do that. <laughs> that was so good. Anyway. Well, the new Alexandria Ocasio Cortez movie, To the End. Bombed at the box office. It brought in eighty-one dollars per theater and under ten thousand dollars. <laughs> wow! Year. This is the first I'm hearing of this. That. Is the first I'm hearing of it. I, I don't. Why did they? Do, thing. I don't understand why they put what's it, it as about. A, this feels like something that should live on Netflix as a documentary. Why? Are, yeah. Why is it getting a theater release? I don't understand. Yeah, what's it? Okay, it says Dr. Rachel Lear's latest film, To the End, gives some insight into the new representative's time in office. The video calls that she rolls her eyes at the realization she's had about Washington D.C. and more. The video calls that she rolls her eyes at. But the focus here is more about the Green New Deal, a vital change to infrastructure in America that could help fight against global warming, save the American economy as the clock. It sounds more exciting than Avatar Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the next. Are we excited for Avatar Two? No, or not? it looks terrible. I, don't. I have no care. I, I, it's one of those things where I feel like if I went to see it, and maybe I will at some point, it's probably a fine, like a good movie. To some degree. That's I how I felt about, about the first one. I thought it was like good. It was just fine. I didn't love it. I didn't need to see another one. All right, this is my like, thought. I don't understand the, all the, why it's James like, Cameron I, I felt like thinks it was, there's this huge fan base that is dying to see it again. It was again. technically competent. Yeah. And I can barely remember a thing about it. Yes, that's how I, I, I one thing it I remember. Again. I think it was the like one thing I remember is the fact that they had the way that their their species coupled. Oh, they had hair the braids. And it was just so disturbing to me. Yes, it was strange. And I couldn't stand it. And then watching a whole other movie based on, like, now she's pregnant. Yes. She got pregnant through the braid, and now she has a, you know, how, it just doesn't work physiologically How can for he? Me. Why wouldn't the baby be, like, in the Right. Head? Well, it's got to be, like, up here. Like, it's you know, already, like, it's already I, out. I hear that. It's going to a Fetterman net, neck lump. Maybe that's... I hear that Avatar 2 has three bonus hours of hair sex. <laughs> <laughs> The unrated, yes. the unrated, <laughs> the unrated, unrated, oh. unrated. Is, isn't he in like an avatar body? How can he reproduce? <laughs> I, see, I don't understand that completely. Either. Somehow he transfers himself into the blue. There's like another body. body. Yeah, they, like, it's called they... Avatar, you guys. It's about transferring your consciousness. Oh, I also think it's weird how he made this whole series called Avatar when there was already a popular series called Avatar. And now you always yeah. have to specify yeah. Yeah. blue people or the good ones. Or the arrow, yeah. the arrow on the head yeah. guy. That's right, the blue people. Yeah. It's the blue people. So I have no care for Avatar. I thought it was a terrible movie. Well, like I guess technically competent, but I just do you guys yeah. remember the, the hype? In my do you guys yeah. remember the yes. hype about Avatar one? Yeah. Was, I felt I like friends. it was totally manufactured. I didn't feel like there was any. No, I still feel like it's. Manufactured I had friends that were in the film industry that were so excited about it. They said it was going to be revolutionary. It was going to yeah. change filmmaking, and this was going to be how every movie is made after no, this. I just didn't. That's right. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, that's time for enough of that banger of the week. <laughs> Go see Avatar. <laughs> Banger 
of the week. Here's our banger of the week this week. Brittany Griner flees back to Russia in terror after seeing American flag. <laughs> That's a good she image. hates the country and the national anthem. She sure does. Mm. So what do you well, think? I'm glad what she's think? back, but the trade was kind of bad. I, yeah, I think yeah. it's a good. It's just it's a bad trade. I don't think people should hate that she's not in Russia. Like I saw a lot no, of I, I'm absolutely great the that right she, yes, saying right. like go back to Russia. Like no, I think I'm, I'm you, glad she's free. Like, as much as we make jokes about it, I think everybody thinks she was clearly overcharged and didn't American deserve to be in, in didn't deserve to be like imprisoned that, yeah. over there like that. This was a big deal. But the way the negotiations went down, our government clearly got ripped off. In this I, why did we have a we couple other people that are in prison in Russia? Why not? If you're going to give them the arms dealer then take all the Americans back. Like that, there's a veteran that's there. There's a teacher who got convicted for a pot thing too. Who's yeah. at like a work camp. Yes. There's so, that Paul Whelan Marine. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that the veteran? Whelan, yeah. yeah. Right. Like why not get, if you're going to do that kind of trade. Yeah, I don't know. So they're at a name. work camp because they did some weed? He's at a labor camp because he accidentally brought, I think medicinal marijuana with him when he went to Russia. Because hmm. he, Yeah. But he's like, oh, no one cares about me because I'm a teacher. And I'm like, no one cares about WNBA players either. Didn't the White House specifically say that the reason was intersectionality? I think it was. Oh, did they really? I think it was Jean Pierre or something said, well, she is a black, you know, LGBTQ woman. Really? I hadn't heard that. So oh, she's gay and she I plays might have just basketball? made that up, but I think that's what happened. Yeah. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Dan, knock three times if that was correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard three knocks. Mm. I didn't hear anything. Okay. Really? I heard like fumbling around. <laughs> Maybe Dan was asleep and he's like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> All right. It is time for our bomb of the week. Bomb of the week. Husband scientists confirm minimum of 35 pieces of tape required to wrap a gift. Hmm. hmm. I wonder I wonder if it would have done better if it was gift. just are, are you guys gift wrap? I'm terrible. I'm terrible at it and I try like even when I try to be good at it and I try to be it still doesn't look good. It still looks terrible. And I am always judgmental of men that are good gift wrappers. Yeah, there's something I'm always strange. A little, it's something a little weird sus, about him. Sus He's a little, He's a little uh, <laughs> They're brothers. <Yes. laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Um, How many pieces of tape? I'm like, you oh, you wrapped that gift pretty good, didn't you? Uh, so much like piece, number of pieces of tape as it is like you've been, uh, I can't no but it's like it's not that I use way too much tape it's that I don't flies. it's always not even I'm trying to fold it in and it's, it's like a little baggy on, it's not, it's well I always nice have one neat. one side is generally like I have to fold under so there's like a big big triangle on one side so I have to like mm. fold it over and then kind of roll it up and then yeah. and stick it on there yeah Emma are you a good pieces. gift wrapper yeah but I'm I was good three at pieces like, of tape maximum yeah, oh, three is the goal. Good origami. Oh, you yeah. are. You're a good gift yeah. wrapper. Good it's the same thing, wrapper. folding gifts. So b- the article bombed, but very relatable. Well, you know, it's interesting. My grandfather used to take every, he used to unwrap presents in a really meticulous way. And I think it's because he came from the 30s or something like that. But he would, he would take a knife and he would cut through all the tape and all the sides and he would save every piece of wrapping paper so they could use it again mm-hmm. the next year. And it was the most irritating thing on Did Christmas he... morning because you wanted to just make it I like it just making the pile of Christmas yeah, paper. Just, and, yeah, just throw it away. Yeah. Did he use it again? I, I don't think they ever did. That's the other thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure they just kept it in the closet. <laughs> so it's a waste. I'm sorry. That was a really good story. You guys want to hear it again? Sure. All right, cool. So my grandfather. <laughs> no, no one picked on you, Jared. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. Why don't I just listening? <laughs> I was going to say one of my favorite visual tropes that we do on the Babylon Bee is like a scientist examining something, that juxtaposition. I always like, there's an old <laughs> Onion article that says like, scientists discover that dolphins are not so smart on land. <laughs> and they have like three scientists with clipboards and there's a dead dolphin lying there. <laughs> and they're just staring at it, like taking notes. And that's always been one of my favorite. Uh, Emma plays uh, in, in, the, in an upcoming video that's coming out this week. Oh, the science. Yeah. Emma oh. plays a scientist examining science yes. stuff. Very I was like, I thought you were going to go with dead dolphin. Joke. And, and I was like, joke. I don't play a dead dolphin. Yeah, she plays no. a dead dolphin. You play a very good scientist. Well, we have to though. write a sketch where Emma plays a dead dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this dolphin's an idiot. <laughs> To you. And now it is time for our most slash least popular segment, Sizzler <laughs> Facts. 20 weeks ago, we debuted a new feature on the podcast called Sizzler Facts. Here's this week's. On December 13th, 2022, producer Dan Coates and director of video production Brandon Toy donned their favorite Sizzler t-shirts and headed over to their local Sizzler restaurant. You won't believe 
what happened next. Between the two of them, they ordered steak, shrimp, Malibu chicken, and a salad bar. The steak was seasoned quite well, even if the cut moderately dubious. It was significantly better than the last steak Brandon had at Fleming's. Whoa. The Malibu chicken was interesting. Dan enjoyed his shrimps and regretted not getting an additional skewer. Brandon was so overwhelmed by the choices at the salad bar that after sampling a few select items, he chose to primarily focus on the main course. Though they wore their Sizzler shirts with Sizzler pride, the half dozen employees they interacted with cautiously averted their eyes from the Sizzler emblazoned attire and refused to call any attention to the Sizzler spirit the B crew brought forth. Sad. Not good. What's really sad and not good is clearly some of our fellow employees went to Sizzler without us. I was not invited. I'm, this has I, we, been we were not. Facts. We were not invited. Yesterday. That was yesterday. Is there a Sizzler close? When did you guys go to Sizzler yesterday? This news to us. This is devastating. Um, it is. So they wore the Sizzler Hurtful. shirts and the, the Sizzler. Yeah. So is this our Hurtful. Sizzler comments? About? Yeah, we're making Sizzler yeah. comments on Sizzler. Yeah. It's painful. Don't laugh. It's a serious segment. No I don't want to go to Sizzler ever again. I'm actually really, I'm, I'm quite surprised that they wore the Sizzler shirts and none of the employees were like. Yeah, like, hey, Sizzler, that's where we There's are. There's probably not a lot of Sizzler pride anymore. I imagine that's, that's waned over Our the years. Our country has really lost really a sense lost. of Sizzler pride. I mean, My, even the employees. We need to pass the respect for Sizzler. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. My army so went that to. Would like to vote, that would like to destroy Sizzler. <laughs> <laughs> we need a disrespect for Sizzler. Disrespect for Sizzler. Yes. Sizzler. My... It defines a McDonald's burger as a Sizzler steak. Hey Brandon, was did you really oh, like the steak better than Fleming's? That's, yeah, that's a uh, bold claim. Like I think I, I've had good steak at Fleming's and I've had okay steak at Fleming's. I've never had a bad steak at Fleming's. Yeah. So that's uh, a good steak there. Bold claim. Fleming's claim. is good. Sizzler. Yeah, Brandon is alleging that Sizzler's is better than Sizzler. Fleming's. Although here's the thing about Brandon is it, he has taste buds that I trust. You know, he's got he's the taste. He's got he's the more taste buds. Than us on the taste buds. For I sure. feel like he has a better, a wider palate. I don't trust understand. him after this. Well, I mean, a sizzler but, but, steak. But I'm curious if he just had a bad experience out of Fleming. Like Flemings. he just had a really bad. Ex- I had a really bad customer service experience out of Fleming's one time, but yeah. I, the, the steak was still fine. I had a great wedge salad out of Fleming's. Mm. This has been Fleming's facts. <laughs> and now it's time for weekly news with Adam Yenser. It's time for the weekly news with Adam Yenser. This week, FTX founder, crypto creep, and real-life hobbit Sam Bankman-Fried was arrested in the Bahamas and charged with one of the biggest financial frauds in U.S. history. His victims say they just wish someone had warned them cryptocurrency was a bad investment. Besides their friends, their families, their neighbors, their co-workers, their bartender, financial experts on TV, Warren Buffett, several podcasts, and most of the people they've ever met. If he's convicted on all charges, Bankman Freed faces a maximum sentence of 115 years in prison, which means by the time he's released, he'll be almost Joe Biden's age. <laughs> Sam Bankman Freed has hired defense attorney Dave Lawyer Guy Justice. Elon Musk is auctioning off furniture, appliances, and other items from Twitter headquarters in San Francisco. For instance, this old couch, which is listed for $44 billion or best offer. <laughs> Former nuclear waste deputy Sam Brinton is no longer employed by the Department of Energy after they decided he just came with too much baggage. According to a new poll, 61% of Republicans want a candidate other than Donald Trump in 2024. And I'm one of them. 61% of me wants a candidate other than Trump, but 39% of me is like, nah, let's do Trump again. (laughs) A former Navy SEAL who was hailed by CNN for transitioning announced that he has detransitioned because it destroyed his life. We're happy to hear he's no longer a SEAL and is human again. (laughs) James Cameron caught COVID and had to skip the Hollywood premiere of his long-awaited movie Avatar 2. Cameron says he's feeling better and will leave the house as soon as his testosterone test comes back negative. (laughs) The Avatar premiere was held on Tuesday, but thankfully the movie is so long he may still catch the end of it. That's it for weekly news. Check out my stand-up special on drybarcomedy.com and see me live at Crackpots in Maslin, Ohio, December 16th and 17th. Americans are discovering that if we want to change the nation, we have to change the way the marketplace works. And that change starts with you, with your local communities, and with your wallet. Be deliberate with your dollars and reject woke corporations. Imagine a world in which every single dollar you spend would go towards companies that share your values for life, liberty, and patriotism. 
Now with the Public Square app, you can. Public SQ, or Public Square, is an app and website that connects freedom-loving Americans to the community and companies that share their values. Engage in a nationwide platform with the largest directory of patriotic businesses and consumers, all while accessing exclusive savings at businesses that see the world the way you do. The marketplace is free to join for consumers and business owners alike. To get started and shop your values, download the Public Square app from the App Store or Google Play, or click on the link in the video description. Hey, thanks, Adam Yenser. That was great. Now it's time for our first segment. When... Oh, is this the book? I don't. You set yeah, this up. Sure. I don't know this book. Yeah, it was. It's the so, segment is when was the last time, especially oh. for husbands. Um, so, do you want to talk about the book or last time? So, twenty weeks ago, we had a segment where we did an especially for wives book that we read. It was published in the seventies, and it had advice for wives. Some of it was good advice, and some of it was just kind of really cheesy and sappy, and some of it was bizarre. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually went on eBay and procured the. Um, Companion sequel piece. book, yeah, especially for husbands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when was the last time? And it has a very dour, serious cover of a man very thoughtfully standing yeah. in front of a brick wall. He's and got it's kind a, of a Trump look. A little bit of that hair. hair. Young when Trump. Last Hasselhoff time. Yeah. look or something. So yeah. this is a, last time a challenging self-improvement plan for husbands in 46 simple steps. Okay, so... Um, is that the three of us are pages. husbands so and I, or men. I'm the only wife, I'm unless man. someone I'm, wants I'm to. Yeah, and so I would like Emma to quiz no. us on when was the last time we did these things. And we'll but you see. are a potential husband. Yeah, I'm so a, you fit. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna um, write down your responses. Okay. Oh, we're actually gonna <clears throat> score it on this. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I mean it's like there's no right or wrong. Um, so it's like just go back. Uh, what you did in the last week, and well, then when especially. Was the last time, so. Yeah, but how many times did you do this in the last week? So if we week? didn't do this in the last this week, is, no point. It's a we zero. get no point. Oh, this is not a good thing. I feel like it should be had a busy week. last time. Well, I don't know how you like, can keep score, Can we do it the last three weeks or so last two It's competitive weeks? Sure. and okay. whoever... Do you want to do last two last weeks? Last month. Let's just call it month. That's a long time. We'll ask a question. We'll see if it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. We'll make of course up the rules. Of course, 17 your marriage. A month is not very long. Okay. When was the last time I asked my wife for a date? Huh. Monday. It's probably been a couple weeks, two, three weeks. So is that a point for Jarrett then? And so, but that's point? that means I just asked her. It doesn't mean that I took her out. It doesn't. It doesn't say you have to take her. <laughs> Your wife turned you down for a date. Hey, would you go out with me? No. 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 I it's see us Christmas. as just friends. <laughs> you want to go? Out? I don't feel that way about you. How many times well, do I have been, to tell you? We've been living together for a while. We have yeah. four children. Yeah. Oh. Should we start going steady? <laughs> start going steady. I'm on. So for Adam, should it be like, how many times should you do this in two how weeks? How many times did I ask girls out and get rejected in the last week? <laughs> how many uh, no, like, this well, week. When was the if, last time you asked a girl out? When was the last time I asked a girl out? Oh, that's out? an interesting question. Probably like two or three weeks, maybe. It's the okay. same as me. <laughs> the oh, Dennis, yeah. Dennis Prager wants to know. That's yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Is your wife here with us now? Is your wife here with us now? I don't really feel like that's happening. It's pretty good. I feel like it's pretty good. Okay. We can just we can so, agree, so, to, so, agree, to, agree to disagree. Okay. When was the last time I complimented my wife in front of the children? Oh, I'd say pretty often. This morning. I, yeah. I would say this this late morning. Um. So <laughs> how how many times have you done that in the last two weeks? Oh, gosh, I don't know. <sighs> Gee. Uh, three. Five. Three. This, uh, I've probably done it. X plus one, where X is whatever Jarrett says. <laughs> I'm <laughs> plus one. I'd say a few times. I'm trying to be honest about this. Yeah. I think I've... If you I have think to I've, think that hard about it... Then... No, it's been about three or four times, but I'm trying to think if We should have brought so the wives three. in. We should have brought the wives in for let's this. Say, to, yeah, let's see. I, oh, that would have been better because then... They could say no. I'm making it up, you know? You always overestimate when yeah. you do things that are good. All right. Okay, Adam. What's the what's the correct answer? I think, I think well, for me, it's zero because I don't. I trying what to think when the was the last answer? time I complimented a girl in front of children. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have an opportunity on Friday. There's did they kids have there. kids? She's pretty smoking what's hot, that? right? Kids? Did they have kids? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> or was it just other hey, people's girl kids? Over here. <laughs> huh? Get a huh? Your mom. Your mom looks really good. Get a load of this broad. Hey, how's your mom, yeah. kid? <laughs> oh man. All right, what's okay. our I'm going to compliment someone else's wife in front of their <laughs> kids. <laughs> and, hey, uh, kids, your mom's pretty good looking. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, Kyle, you ever, you ever noticed? 
Anyway. So the next one is, I, when was the last time I asked my wife for her opinion on a decision I had to make? Oh, last night. What was the decision? Jared, we, we need a fact check. Um, Jared. Yeah, he's a little, he's being a little too eager with me. No, it's because it, Christina and I legitimately have to debrief every day just because of the type of person I am. And so every conversation that I have when I get home, I, I have to have a, like at least an hour conversation with Christina just to process everything. So um, just because I'm that kind of person. Well, what was the decision? It was a decision that you oh, had to make? Oh, you know, there's a couple. One of them is um, I, mean, I don't need to know. a car, oh, the car. Uh, that we're working on, trying to get. And uh, we're deciding to go with a Kia instead of a Toyota. So that's one good example. There's a bunch of How many of cars others. do you buy in like a given month? Well, it's been. I feel a, like you're constantly buying a it's car. It's been a busy. It's been a busy <laughs> hey couple guys, months. Hey guys, I'm selling my car and I'm buying a new one, and it's just constant. Like, you know, it's nothing like my neighbor. He gets a new truck about every two weeks. So, like, I'm, I'm always amazed. He's well, like, how many times in the last two weeks have I got a car? No, have you asked your wife an opinion about a decision you? Had oh, I, I would say twenty, twenty five. Well, my problem with yeah. that that is, I don't, I don't know if I've asked my wife for her opinion ever. <laughs> her, I don't know if I've ever let her speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if I've ever asked her opinion. Like, it would be more like we're making a decision together, or not. Yeah, I have a decision I need to make. What's your thoughts? Okay, Kyle so gets I, five points because that's the correct answer. No, no, I would say that's I, that's question, more of a. Uh, that's a better characterization of the conversation. Don't, don't try to take my. No, it is more of a. It's a partnership. It is a strange thing where like you're assuming that the man is making all the decisions. He's like, I have like to make this decision. That's how it says it. It says, right. yeah. what is your opinion like Jared looks at but you know how you're always assuming the man is making the decisions? <laughs> <laughs> I was pointing at the book. You know it's how it works. You know how you always... <laughs> okay, Adam, who's correct in this? Should uh, you... Who's correct? Yeah. I, so I got who zero? should get the okay, points? I got zero unclear. on that one. That's, that's completely correct. unclear what you're supposed you to do. You said it. Yeah, I don't that's know. That's a bunch of BS. Don't look uh, at the, the I score. I like all our game when shows I, that we make When I've been in relationships, I'll ask the girl I'm seeing for like advice on, on decisions sometimes. How does it work out? Is it... Um, usually like good. Okay. I value I value that input. Uh, what was your answer to this, Kyle? I said that... That it's like a joint decision kind of thing? Like, I, well, I didn't like the way the question was phrased, uh, like, because I couldn't think of a time where I'm like, I must make this decision alone. I'm going to say, let me ask I'm going to say Jarrett. I'll give Jarrett points for this one. <laughs> Thank you. Just because you were confused. Mostly by... because I wasn't paying attention okay. to what Kyle said. <laughs> well, and also it's 20. I like, no, you, I, I, every time I talk, asked... we're making a decision together. So I don't know. I think you're. I can't write down 20. You're saying zero. And I, that is not a good answer. You're not supposed to look yet. Whose line? I'm what are the rules here? Right. I don't even. All right. This is Emma's. <laughs> and Emma's I somehow decision. went from giving answers to I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the judge. Well, what, what would be your answer then? What? How often? How I haven't at all in weeks? the last two weeks. But when I have been in relationships, I would say it's fairly regular that. Once a I, week? Mm, once a, once or twice a month, I would say. Is she allowed to talk? To? If I give her permission. But it's just her opinion. She has to request it and then I... Okay, when's the last time I asked one of my children out for Coke and conversation? <laughs> what kind of uh, Coke are we talking about? Yeah. I don't like how this question is phrased. It looks um, like it's drinking I especially don't Coke. like this one because I'm single. I haven't asked any kids out for Coke and conversation. <laughs> when's the last time you asked a kid out for Coke and conversation? Oh, I asked six kids this week if they wanted to hang out. They all ran. <laughs> I just want to talk to them and have a Coke. Hey, kid, you want a Coke? <laughs> I, mean, I, don't I got know some about, coke in the van. <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm not sure about asking a kid out for co for coke. It, I don't think it, it's but implying took, like asking them out. I took my out. son and my two middle sons to uh, Knott's Berry Farm last week, so that that counts. Um, yeah, I mean I don't know. It happens all the time. I take my kids. So, I would say so I don't do the. I haven't done the one at one time with the children yeah. as much as I should. It's probably been a good month or two before since I've been like, hey, do you want to, you know, have a Coke? Have a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to crack open a Coke? I only really do that with crack my, my talking about life. My favorite song. <laughs> yeah. I think that's good to do. I'll, then they yeah, won't feel like they're like the favorite. That should be done more often. I'll do things with the kids in the house, like, yeah. You jam on the guitar with Sam or mm -hmm. play a video game with them and then, you know, stuff like that. I admittedly need to work on that. Yeah. 
I, I hang out with all I of them. I give myself zero points. I give myself zero points. Yeah. I, I gave you zero points, too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've, like, I've, I've already decided. <laughs> she gave me zero I, points I for my decision one. with my wife thing. Because you said 20, so I'm like, no way as a been Oh, you, you busted. You went over. Oh, it's probably more. It's actually probably more than that, I would say. All right, what's uh, the next anyway. one? Is that on the decision one? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, that might be because like like a woman, I would think, wants you to ask advice on some things. But it's bad if you're just constantly, yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah, no. you need well, to leave. know what it is because I think They need to be said, led with a firm hand. It's legitimately... It's legitimately a conversation. Every decision we make is always joint. I never make a decision on my own, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, I, okay, what number one. between one and three do you want me to change the zero to? No, just leave it at 20. Okay. No, you're the decider. <laughs> so when was the last time I babysat so my wife could go out, have, have a night, night out? out. I, that's a constant thing. Monday. And I will also say that I offer it more than she actually takes me up on it. See, you're better than me on this. I'm going to give you both a half. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> I think Because Kyle's you're better. not babysitting, it's your own kids. Christina, so, it's oh, another man. 1978. I do hate, I do like, hate when you guys You're say not that, like, babysitting. Oh, I'm babysitting tonight. I'm like, you, you produced the child. You made them. Yeah. No, I legitimately, I, I think... I that's a good point, Emma. Thank Christina you for goes out with her friends. Thank you for calling us out on that. That's true. My Christina goes out with her friends about once or twice a month, and that's yeah. I When's the last time you babysat children? I, I did, but I meant out. I meant if I was married and like my wife wanted to go out, I'd love to stay home with the kids, but still have the babysitter come over. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the babysitter. <laughs> All right, sorry. Bring the babysitter over for Coke and conversation. Yeah, Coke and conversation. <laughs> coke. When was the last time you asked the babysitter out to Coke? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sad. What do we got next? I um, found a good one, but I lost it. Oh. When's the last time you lost a page in a book that you read? When's the last time I kissed my wife without sex as the object? Oh. Like That's this morning? Strange. I don't think I ever do that. <laughs> I have, I have evolved beyond your human desires for sex. I'm giving Derek no, I, a I negative. Would, <laughs> that's always the okay, I, yeah. that's always the, That's always where you're hoping it goes. I don't think, but I don't think... I'll it, take a zero on yeah. that. I think in like a marriage, a kiss is rarely the like... That's rarely the thing that kicks off the <laughs> adventures. You know what I mean? It's rarely the inciting incident. I, I don't think. Funny. I don't know I, why. I don't know what you like mean. I think you red. need to explain it to the audience. Yeah. Cool. Kyle and his wife initiate like they do in Avatar. <laughs> they wrap their hair. They hair wrap their hairs together. <laughs> it's when our hair touches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know why this is embarrassing. <laughs> okay. If I want to have an escapade, I'm not going to go. Like if my, and my wife's washing dishes or something, I'm not going to just go. Hey, like thinking that that's that again. The, like the, that, look, that. the look would say more than the action. You can't give her the look. I'm not going to tell you guys what I do. And that wasn't like an initiating sex kiss. It was like, oh, that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I like that the book assumes that every time you kiss, it's just for well, one. Well, that's, that's the default. Is that, is, like, I mean, that's, like, that's what I'm saying is that it's kisses, accurate. kisses are Funny like. Funny joke, but actually last, <laughs> last Saturday that happened. So that was one. That was one time. I gave you a negative point five. Me? Okay. No, Jared. Cool. I, I gave, you can, I gave you can Kyle a two. I'm, I you need to grow. Two and he got negative. I need to grow. Completely <laughs> random weighting of the points. Here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do a few more yeah. here. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. When was the last time I fixed a meal? Like one that she broke. <laughs> uh, I like eh? that. Eh? Hey. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Uh, the last time I cooked was a while ago. I don't really. I barbecue once I'll barbecue. a week. I'll barbecue. Yeah. Yeah, I'll offer to barbecue. I barbecue on um, Fridays usually. I'll make food for the kids. Like if one of them's like, I'm hungry, I'll microwave them some ramen. As long as they like some, like a quesadilla. Or, or Eat your cereal. quesadilla. I, I would say, Amethy, that it has been several months since I have like done the barbecuing or something so i do That's the great. barbecuing Jared claims once a week, once a week now i so did yeah I, i've cooked fish last do a friday a lot of stuff in a week so, uh, yeah. i do it's because i i like my wife and i have a good marriage <laughs> okay Jared, you said you said that once or twice uh in i once in the last week but twice in the last two weeks okay two in the last three weeks kyle probably three <laughs> 
Adam, do you like to cook? Four. You see where, you know, this is, you see where I, this the is last going? time I cooked a full meal was probably about a month ago. I used to like cooking a lot. I still enjoy cooking, but I've gotten with my work schedule so in the habit of eating out all the time yeah, that too. I just don't. But it's something I used to cook multiple times a week, either for myself or, you know, when I had roommates or I'm home with my family. Yeah. But um, lately, I'd say it's been a month since I've cooked a whole. Do you meal feel myself. like you're a good a good? I feel cook? like I feel like I'm good at the few things that I know, but it's something that I would like to get better at. Yeah. I, what's I, your What's your best dish? Um, there's know. a balsamic mushroom chicken dish oh. that I can make that's really good. And at the holidays, good. there's a broccoli and cheese casserole that I make mm. that's really good. I love those. Man, I love a I love do a casserole. You, um, you make me hungry. Do you feel comfortable eating at a restaurant alone? Yeah, definitely. Do you eat out at the restaurant or do you go home? Um, usually eat out at the restaurant. I have a lot of friends in my neighborhood, so I get dinner a lot with friends, but I have no problem at all eating alone at a restaurant. And I movies. like sitting at a bar. I always like, if I'm by myself, whether I find other people to talk to there or if not, I'm out on I, a love, work trip, I love sitting I, at a bar. If I'm out on a work trip or something, I don't mind. I love finding a little local place and sitting by myself. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. It's yeah. nice. I always end up making friends. I've never been self conscious. I've never been self conscious about it. I know some people feel weird going out oh, to a restaurant and eating yeah. by themselves. I've never had a problem with that. I feel I'll, really weird. I'll sit yeah. down and I'll see the people across me and be like, "Hey, what are you guys doing I, here?" I know you do. You guys come here a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were standing in line at that Vegas buffet, and you made friends with everyone around us. Yeah. Well, those were interesting people. They were roller derby people. I know, and they were all wearing like whoa, they were like clothes. They were like the women that you would that you would characterize like on our sketches. They were blue hair, uh -huh. shaved out, all tatted up, like you know. And they were all from ro roller derby. Very interesting. So that's why I talked. When to was them. the la next one? When was, when the, was the last, last time, time you met I, someone I in I Vegas? I told my myself? wife I loved her more than my mother. Never. Never. I feel like that's just a weird statement. I think to make. that's uh I feel it's very different. Honey. It's a different kind of love. Yeah. I, I love say. you yeah. more than yeah. my mother. I Is do that not more like than that. my mother? I don't like that. More question. than your mother. Yeah. Do you love your wife more than your mother? Way, yeah. It's a weird way to frame it. Yeah, I would like say the love that you have for your mother is different it. than the love you have. A woman Lewis, didn't write Lewis this book. would categorize these loves differently. Emma, how would you feel if your husband looked you in the eye and said, "Emma, I love you more than my mother"? I would be really happy about that. Would you really? You would. <laughs> you wouldn't find it a weird statement. Like, a, like would, it's a weird. No, it'd be a weird statement. Where does it come from? Yeah, it'd be a weird like statement, it's a but it's like. Uh, I don't know. At least you won. At least it's, it's kind not of, Emma. I love it's my mother of, more than right. you. Right. <laughs> it's yeah, kind of that, an Oedipal. If that was the that alternate, if it was as like as opposed to that alternate, it's much. This better. reminds me of Oedipus Rex. It's a very strange yes, thing. Yes. You know, very Oedipal. Yeah, I mean, if his like mother has to live with us in the future, you know, I don't want to compete for love. Mm -hmm. Like, boy, well, are you listening to this, Mark? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh. What else do you want to know about him? <laughs> Yeah, um, all right, let's, let's, oh, do, let's do one I, more. Here we go. When's the last time I gave my wife $20 and told her to spend it on herself? <laughs> <laughs> go get don't yourself spend something it. nice. Don't spend, don't it, spend all it all in one place. <laughs> all in one place, Kitz. You know, $20 is quite a bit of money That's a lot in, back in, in the, the 70s. We're talking we like 100 Do you like inflation calculator and Inflation find out calculator from 78 yeah. to 100 know? bucks. What, what year is that, man? 1978, I think. Okay, 1978. I would say that I almost never do this because she just has the bank cards and... 1978. But I will tell her, like, do you yeah. want to go get your nails done or something? Go ahead and I'll watch the kids. I'll well, babysit Does she, does she ask you, of like, oh, is it okay if I buy this thing and... She probably doesn't like, ask no. me and she just buys it. Oh, okay. Okay. So in 1978, the equivalent of $20 is about $91. Yeah, about, 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 $100, about $100. About $100. Bucks. Mm -hmm. that was, yeah, that's what I was assuming. I don't know. It's funny. Now I want you guys to go to your home to your eyes and go, hey, honey, here's $91. <laughs> exactly. Go, go buy yourself something nice. <laughs> go buy yourself something nice, sweetie. Go to the TJ Maxx. Do you want to do one more? Sure. Better than yeah. Ross. Okay. This is fun. This is a fun game. Let's see. I'm still not clear on the rules. <laughs> I mean, I'm not clear on the scoring. I like how the scoring system, Ada's probably going to beat us as the best husband. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably She's true. pulling out negative points. And oh, yeah, no. I definitely have areas to grow. What? I don't remember what it was. Oh, it was like when you said, I have never done that ever. That's when I gave you negative. It was a kiss question. Like making decisions? No, it was something else. Because hmm. you gave me a zero for that, too. <laughs> I, I like I this question. I'll, I'll mention it, but I don't want it to be the question. Okay. It's when was the last time I took my wife for a walk? But uh, let's do this question. Like on a leash? <laughs> on a leash. <laughs> Okay, this question is, um, when was the last time 
Do that in public. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many directions, that, and none of them are good. Not that good, really. It can go in so many directions. None Is of them are good. Is this a Balenciaga good. thing? Or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go for um, a walk. She's scratching at the door. She want to go? Out. Out. <laughs> so, <laughs> we just we, we typically just <laughs> um, When's the last time I called my wife from work and told her she was special? Yesterday. You I'm serious. I didn't. You did not call your wife from specific. work and say I know you are serious special. We all heard him. You didn't. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was boy yelling. Was Honey, boy. period. You are special. <laughs> period. Also, comma. Can you can you pick up some uh, <laughs> pick some milk on the way home? I can babysit for you later. Yeah, I'll babysit. <laughs> I talked to. Would my you wife. like ninety one dollars? Question to mark. go to TJ Maxx. <laughs> I'm constantly texting my wife like at work. But yeah. I don't, I don't, spe I don't especially do it just to say you're special. But I will say like, how was your day? How you doing? That you means know, the same thing. Long. I would say that's a very specific updates thing of say. like when I think I'll be leaving. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is before the love languages too. So you got to imagine like every woman is going to hear something different. So if I call Christina and be like, okay, how are the kids? How's everything going? That is me saying you're special or I love you. If it's no, like you know, that, you have to specifically say you're special. You're spe so I don't, I don't get any points then for that. I haven't said you're special. I didn't give you any points. <laughs> <laughs> I did like this. <laughs> like, well, you can don't worry. I, I took care. Did <laughs> I feel like there's kind of like a vindictive comparison going on. I'm not sure. <laughs> I did Here. like this question. Um, I I'm did. Not mad at Mark. When's the last time? I'm I'm not mad at I'm just kidding. Mark. I'm kidding. I, when's the last time I did not throw the past up to my wife? And then it's him Wait, leaning the over. I did not, throw, I did not throw the past up to my wife. I think it's like, mean, like bring up I didn't old, bring up yeah, okay. the Women past. do that to men. Men throw don't do that past. to women. Hold, hold on, calm down for a second. Um, it's a woman's this, favorite past time is throwing I, it up the past. I, I, I love how the picture is like he's oh mad gosh. over a car accident. Like, like there's a that, smashed up car and he's like. You just know. She's like, don't bring that up. That's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it was it 10 happened. minutes ago. And... <laughs> Um, that's a weird way to frame that too like when's the last time you didn't like right I, now I guess wouldn't it be like a picture I mean, of somebody like dating someone it, else so. or something like yeah. that a picture of the old girlfriend but I I'd thought this was funny the self evaluation that you can do at the end of the book mm -hmm. is to rate yourself between zero and four of how many times you did those things in the last okay. year oh in the oh, last okay. year that's crazy they're, they didn't put a lot of expectations on men. It's back like then. you didn't I, babysit I kissed for my a wife year. Four times in the past year, perfect <laughs> score. Perfect <laughs> score. That's amazing. You're doing great. I don't want to tally this though, but um, I think we should, you know, follow up with the wives and see. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. They, yeah, let's, to, maybe let's not. Start we could. A fight. We, we have our Valentine's in. Day episode coming up soon, so. We could bring the wives I in. I gotta find a date for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah find it. a date. I would How's still love for doing? you to get it like an internet, like an app date or something. It'd be fun to do a first time, a like, first like a first the... date on the podcast. <laughs> like, do you want to come on my podcast? <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be so funny. Yeah. And it's for, like not only her, two people are here us. and we won't turn it, it on all could the go, lights. It, it could be very fun or it could be very bad. Yeah. But <laughs> it would be bad for the future of the relationship that you're starting. Would you ask them like personal <laughs> you have a questions? Great story to one tell. place I it's one true. place I worked at a guy, he was he was gay. He brought a first time date to the office holiday party. <laughs> oh man. Wow. <laughs> go go a yours. first time date. Yeah. That's pretty ballsy. Yeah. Do you want to know who won? Yes. Um I assume Kyle I think won. I think Jarrett won. Oh, okay. Good job, Jarrett. Yep. I don't know. I think Kyle. What was I the think... numbers? Do we have a, a final score that we can put on the screen? <sighs> well, now I have to do the math and figure out that I was wrong. Let's see, four. I'll tell you. You know what makes for good radio? Uh, um, Kyle <laughs> lost by Quietly one. Kyle about. got eight. Jared got nine. Okay. What did Adam get? Ten. I didn't really keep out of. If you score. had to make up a score for me, what do you think it would be? <laughs> Ten. Oh, oh, so he so he did win. No, Adam that's Adam's only because you're winning by ten. one. Okay, eight. Don't get full of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this has been especially for husbands. Uh, maybe we'll find some more books in the series. I think there's a parents one, which I'm excited to read, especially Ooh, for parents. I want to be judged. 
and yeah, it'll be a good time. Treasure in heaven is great, but it's not gonna buy you a tank of gas. So let's take a moment to briefly review the current state of our economy and the global effect the war between Russia and Ukraine has had. We're in for a tough year here, and Biden's printing and spending could be catastrophic for the US dollar and the market. That's why a growing number of financial analysts are recommending you diversify with gold and silver now. And the only company we recommend is Allegiance Gold. Our friends at Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver and have it delivered securely right to your door. The team at Allegiance Gold takes the time to educate their clients on the importance of having a financial portfolio that's diversified with gold and silver. Allegiance Gold has been one of the top precious metals firms in the nation for their commitment to protecting your hard-earned savings. They have an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau, a five-star rating with Trustlink, and they're AAA rated with the Business Consumer Alliance. If you act now by calling them and you mention Babylon B, they'll even give you $500 of free silver on a qualified purchase. Call 844-790-9191 to get this exclusive offer. Or you can visit allegiancegold.com slash B. That's B-E-E. -E. Call 844-790-9191. That's 844-790-9191. Or visit allegiancegold.com slash B-E-E. -E. We're going to move on to our second segment. Um, a few weeks ago, 20 weeks ago, uh, Kevin Conroy passed away. Yes, the best Batman of all time. Kevin Batman. <laughs> and we brought up at the time that someone had rapid fire Sorry. ninja edited his Wikipedia page and uh, uh, Adam found yeah, this. Yeah, so I got a brief screen grab of this before it was changed. Right the day that Kevin Conroy died, someone had chain edited the end of his Wikipedia bio in the opening to say, he is no <laughs> longer among us. And then they changed his name to Kevin Batman. <laughs> Capital K, lowercase B. <laughs> And I've been laughing about this for weeks. It I, does I think make about me laugh so I don't know much. Why. I don't know why. Don't he's know one why. of the, and he's one of the animated Batmans. He's not yes. a. He was never on. He was never on on camera as Batman. I just but tried to get in the head of the person. His whole <laughs> name to Kevin, Kevin Batman, Batman. <laughs> with lowercase. B. It's like one of the very one of one of many things it's, he probably did in his life. Yeah, but that was what he's known. It's funny because it's not clever or sincere enough to be someone who was like trying. To, <laughs> yes, like, really, it's just that's silly. Why, it's that's just, why it's funny. It's stupid. Like, somebody did well. Meeting person that was like, oh, I'm gonna be the first. Yeah. One. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, first one. I don't know his last name. What's his last name? Like, and I wonder whether they were trying to do that or if yeah. it was. I've never edited a Wikipedia page. If they typed in something yeah, in the it, wrong box and then hit approve, or and it was bad. That's a lowercase b too. So I wonder. Yeah. His name's Kevin Batman. Or it's like when you when you take somebody's phone number into your phone, you don't know their last name, so you like write what you know them from. Like I did that when I first met Bettina. Yeah. I said Bettina Babylon B. That's her name in my phone. Uh -huh. to this day. I think that's actually her last name, though. Yes, <laughs> that's actually and Ben. the line still makes me laugh. I don't know if it's as funny when I just say it by standalone, but when you read the whole bio... It's very And serious. it says uh, he the offic he uh, voiced Batman in the, the critically acclaimed Batman Arkham and in Justice video games, <laughs> he is no longer among us. <laughs> He's no longer among us. <laughs> With no period. <laughs> You know, I auditioned for the Arkham Batman. <laughs> did you? Yes, I we're did. We're up against Kevin and Batman. And Kevin Batman got it. And I'm, I was wondering why, but I think it's because he had a last name. That was his Kevin last Batman. name. Yeah. That's right. Kevin Batman here to read for the role of Batman. <laughs> but uh, this inspired us to I, look up other... Uh, I, I couldn't find the screenshot, but I was mentioning to the other guys, when I was in high school, we always used to look up weird stuff on Wikipedia, and I looked up this, this soda knockoff called Mountain Breeze. It was a Mountain Dew <laughs> knockoff. And someone had edited the Wikipedia page. It was like, oh, it was similar to this. It was like, oh, this is a generic product made by Safeway, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes, <laughs> to be best... It is best experienced if you climb the tallest mountain and shout, I can handle the mountain <laughs> breeze. <laughs> and I think about it quite often. Like once a week, I think about this and nobody knows it. And I couldn't find it on the way back machine. So and I might have made it up, but in my head, it's like the funniest thing ever. So we've, it inspired us to, to go look for other um, <laughs> changes. Other funny Wikipedia edits. And I think we got some of made. these from Board Panda, which does some of these like compilation lists, probably some other websites. So oh, there's yeah. our attribution. And here we go. So an old revision of the Batman Wikipedia page changed the whole page to simply read Batman. Batman. That's a good one. Uh this one is from uh 
<laughs> Charlie's <laughs> Charlie Sheen's Wikipedia page. Someone briefly edited it to say at the top, Charlie Sheen, born September 3rd, 1965, is half man, half cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay, I think uh, <laughs> the first law. This is a good one. Oh, this is great. The first law. It's uh, the first law of therm thermodynamics. Okay, this is from Wikipedia. The first law of thermodynamics is you do <laughs> not you do not talk about thermodynamics. <laughs> I like the idea of someone looking this up for their school paper and trying to figure it out. I would love if someone actually used it. They're like, I don't know the yeah. reference. <laughs> I write it down. Oh, oh man. man. That's so good. Emma Stone, Emily Jean Stone, is a hot American actress with a beautiful smile. In 1987, she fell out of the sky as an angel. <laughs> Like, it's a historical event. And I like that she was born in 1988. But <laughs> late, <laughs> 19 late in 1988. <laughs> born in 1980, but fell out of the sky in 1987. Oh, this is good. Uh, this is from the Wikipedia page for the French Armed Forces. Ah. It briefly just said, did you mean coward? And it linked to the page on coward. It's, yeah, it's a blue, the blue word coward. So hyperlink. <laughs> That's so funny. There's one, a list of serial killers uh, ranked by number of victims. <laughs> And it says, this list is incomplete. You can help by expanding it. Please do not expand the list by killing people. <laughs> I love um, that. like a good like note to actually one. have on there, maybe. Ooh, Mariah Carey. This is going to be fun. Uh, where am I reading? Oh, okay. So Mariah Carey, it's her official page. She was born March 27th, 1969, or March 27th, 1970, age 47 or 48. Uh, in Huntington, New York. She died December 31st, 2016. Cause of death, embarrassment. <laughs> what happened what that I, day? Oh, was there says, something that... that was, she like had a mic sync. fail, lip sync. Oh. It was like a big thing where she yeah. had a lip sync. Died of embarrassment. Oh, that's okay. funny. Who is this? Janice Joplin? Janice Joplin. Joplin. So Janice Lynn Joplin uh, speed walked everywhere and was afraid of towels. <laughs> I think it says toilets. <laughs> toilets. Or toilets. <laughs> Uh, and then below that, uh, it says that she's from Texas, who sp sp sped walked everywhere and was afraid of toilets. Okay, my favorite. Okay, there's the last one. And last then at the bottom, did you, know? did you know that Janis Joplin speed walked everywhere and was afraid of toilets? <laughs> okay, I wonder so if there's any truth there, to that. What, what that? is that guys, about? Is there a reference to a, a song or something? That, like, is that supposed to be a joke? Oh, I think it's just made it up. I think they made it up. Okay, okay the, my favorite uh, Janis Joplin story that was from 30 Rock. Do you guys remember this? I don't. So in 30 Rock, they made a... She, what's her name? The blonde lady. She was making a TV show about Janis Joplin, but they couldn't get the rights to the name Janis Joplin. And so they went through a bunch of different ones and finally they landed on... They're, they're like, the closest thing we could get was Jackie Jorp Jump. <laughs> 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 so I'm, I'm playing Jackie Jorp Jump. <laughs> That's, That's the best, great. dude. Uh, here's oh. one from the uh, Wikipedia page for Sarah Silverman. Uh, the photo caption says <laughs> Silverman at the 2016 Democratic National Convention, and it's a frog inflating its air sac. <laughs> <laughs> to just replace the picture. That's really good. Uh, okay, so this guy says, I got banned from Wikipedia for making all the verbs on the Ray Romano page hypothetical. <laughs> so <laughs> it says Robert Ray, Raymond Romano. Could be an American. <laughs> he might have been known for his role on the sitcom Everybody Loves Raymond, for which he could have received an Emmy Award and as the voice of Manny in the Ice Age film series. He may have created and started the TNT comedy drama Men of a Certain Age. From 2012 to 2015, Romano could have possibly had a recurring role in <laughs> Gosh, that's funny. Adam Boyd. Uh, two new photos. At, okay, so last night I went to see a band, but we got in late and our view was shite. In my drunken state, I edited the band's Wikipedia page to say I was family, and it worked. I got into the roped off VIP area because of it. Oh, I wonder if that. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's an interesting. <laughs> like, here's the band. Oh, it's this the Sherlock. The, the Sherlocks. Sherlocks. <laughs> released their first. Uh, <laughs> okay, so they released their first single <laughs> live for the moment in 2014, influenced by band vocalist. Kieran Crook's cousin Adam Boy. <laughs> <laughs> like he makes up a whole backstory yeah. for himself. It's like I inspired he's there. the greatest. That's very funny. 
Good for that guy. I don't know. Uh, here's oh. one about the uh, number of extant species of various things. Oh, they invertebrate. Have, they invertebrate have, species. So invertebrate species as insects, snails, crabs, 47,000, arachnids. You scroll down, horseshoe crabs, four. Paul Ryan, one, <laughs> <laughs> as an invertebrate species. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's good. Uh, okay. So tube? Uh, I don't understand. So this one is a... Is a it's like a physics uh, tube, page like, about tube? tubes. Like, what does a tube refer to? And it gives several uh, examples, structural like tubes. structural tubes, inner tubes, pneumatic tubes, and then it says snakes, <laughs> long frog tubes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now referring to snakes as long frog tubes. <laughs> I'm so scared of long frog tubes. I don't know if this is actually a Wikipedia edit or just a really weird caption, but it says, uh, th for the entry for <clears> sadness... <throat> And it goes on, sadness is emotional pain, uh, character of <laughs> despair. And the picture entry is a kid crying. And the caption for it is <laughs> a child crying because his hot dog fell on the ground. <laughs> Just, Just like an ultra-specific caption, I guess. <clears throat> what, what is this one? Uh -oh. This is state slogans. List of U.S. state slogans. So someone, so someone has... edited it to actually have not true slogans. Oh, so they're all Alabama's is Alabama Roll Tide Baby. Jump in my truck with me and my sister wife. <laughs> uh, what are some That's other funny. good ones? California, Eureka, the state where all bad teen dramas come from. That's uh, true. That's true. Connecticut is what? <laughs> Colorado, we got loads of pot bra. Bra, Idaho. Tater's got a tate, tate, tate. <laughs> Tater's gonna tate, 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 tate. <coughs> I like Indiana's. Yes. Honest to goodness, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, That's good. I need to admit something. This guy tweeted, I need to admit something. Every time I'm drunk, I make Missouri slightly larger on its Wikipedia. <laughs> And the picture of what? Missouri it's is slowly, slowly growing, growing into the neighboring states. <laughs> that's a great. Right. Uh, oh, man, that's funny. Someone edited Barack Obama's page <laughs> to say that he is a puppet of Columbia University. <laughs> Just changed it to puppet, I guess. Uh, <coughs> suspected <laughs> pirates. This is a picture of it looks like a bunch of... Uh, They're pirates lifting pirates, their hands in the air. A bunch of Haiti people from Haiti are crossing the pond or something. Suspected pirates keep their hands in the air like they just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> As directed by the guided missile cruiser USS Bella Gulf. Someone just added, As, like they just don't care. <laughs> As the, As, like they just don't care. All right, well, that's, that's good. Funny. If you know any funny Wikipedia edits, send them our way. Maybe well, we, we got to show. I'm, I'm, I got to look up that one quick with the penguin that I. Oh, yeah, you I mentioned one. I, I hadn't seen this one. Penguin Antarctic. Uh, well, go, I, I have to. I don't have it on me. We should have looked it up. Okay. Set. That's cool. All right, well, we are now moving There's a on. great, I'll, I'll explain it. We, we'll put in the picture for okay. it. So there's this Wikipedia page. It's about some Antarctic explorers. And the photo oh, is a, just... an old black and white historical photo of a guy playing bagpipes, and there's a penguin on the ice next to him. And someone edited it. used to say that whatever the guy's name is, it says here he is playing bagpipes next to a lone, a, a like disinterested penguin. And then someone put after his name, like so and so left, plays bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's one of the greatest edits. I mean, I've seen memes like that, yeah, like where the dad's funny. like, oh, this is my daughter. And then there's like a dog and it's yeah. like daughter left and the <laughs> yeah. dog. It's funny. All right. Now it's time for hate mail. I really miss Adam Ford. All right, here's a comment on our Apocalypse Brothers uh, sketch, which you oh, should yeah. go check out on YouTube. This was divisive. It by was the a way. very some people loved it yes. and wanted a series out of it, and some people hated <laughs> I it. Saw, yeah, I didn't see too much hate, so I'm interested yeah. to see with it. Michael Gary, 1872, says, "Sorry, but I hate this. It's blasphemous. <laughs> it mocks God, and the implied incestuous sodomite relationship makes me want to vomit. I'm unsubscribed." I think the description of that relationship made me want to vomit. <laughs> There's no implied incest. They're brothers. Yeah, they're, yeah just, they're, they're, brother. just brothers. they're brothers. They're brothers. We made that, that have a show clear. together. We made it very clear. I don't know, what's in, I don't know what's in his. I don't know what's in his head. Yeah, yeah. Get your head out of the yes. gutter, dude. Uh, Solar Sean wrote, "This is by far the all caps lamest video you have ever done." Okay, mm -hmm. lamest comment I've heard. I can think of a few that were lamer. So Neon Trapa James, no entropy. No entropy. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have gotten that. Right. This video made me overdose on fentanyl. And then how'd you write that? got one thumbs up. Someone else <laughs> <Me> also. <too. laughs> how, yeah. 
And finally, David Cole. What does this guy say? Emma? Said, "Not your best. Keep trying." Oh, thank you. That's nice. Oh, that's not terrible hate mail. That wasn't hate. Hate. It's encouraging. Hmm. Thanks for joining us on the Babylon Bee podcast, guys. We are going to move into the subscriber lounge for anybody who has money. Go to babylonbee.com slash plans. You can subscribe and join us for more fun stuff, bonus hate mail, and uh, subscriber headlines and all kinds of fun stuff. Here we go. Coming up next for Babylon Bee subscribers. As I've been told by women that the bare shoulder areas on dudes can cause sin. Not going to lie. Is it is it for women that it's causing sin or does he have a confession? Like, not going to lie. Uh, I just heard like for some women that I know, <laughs> that other, other people. For other people, it might be. This friend that I know says that he might be struggling because of this video. This has been another edition of the Bee Weekly from the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon Bee. Reminding you that fake news of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth.